Good morning, everyone. I think this is the first vlog I'm making in the new year. So I'm very, very excited because I've been, I haven't been downsizing, but I've been getting rid of stuff that I realize I'm not really using in my life and they're just taking up a lot of space. And even though that they're costly, like my parents, I, I, in my previous vlog, I showed y'all my parents' garage and they have a really, really hard time getting rid of stuff, even stuff they don't use at all and they don't organize their stuff. And I don't want to get to that point. So it's, it's been making me think a lot about how much junk I have. Not junk for me because one man's trash is another man's treasure, but um, uh, I just realized that I have stuff in my apartment that I never use. So I have been um, getting rid of stuff and giving him away uh, to people that will use will take better uh, use will use uh, will take better use of it. Oh my god That, that was a word jumble, but uh, the first thing I got rid of is that I had I don't know if you have seen in, in previous log I had this giant exercise mat here um, that I for some reason thought that I would be doing handstands and backflips at my quarter life um, And I only used it like once or twice. So I was like it's better to go to a home and and uh, luckily, someone who has kids uh, took it off my hands and they sent me a picture. It was so cute uh, of their kids using the mat, even though Jean-Luc uh, scratched a bit of it because since I never used it, he thought it was another scratching post for him. And then I have all these donation clothes because I recently bought new clothes and I was like, why do I need so many clothes? So I got my donation pile uh, lined up, so I'm probably going to... Uh, take this to the donation center sometime soon and then I've been getting rid of some shoes too I've been wanting to get some new shoes that are better for my feet um, if you don't know a little bit of my history but back in high school I got a really bad ankle injury I never really fully healed from it and um, shoes like this actually hurt my feet um, that don't have a lot of cushion so uh, I got rid of one pair of my vans but I'm getting rid of this pair I'm so sad to let these go guys because I really like Vans. Vans were a huge part of my childhood. I had maybe like five pairs um, one time, but it's just that point where my feet just need more, more and more cushion. I'm a big fan of Hoka's now, and Hoka's just look really nice anyways. Um, if you, Some of them look a little, <laughs> a little intense, but I like the more muted colors. Um, but I got rid of one pair this morning. Someone came by and picked it up and uh i'm ready to give away that maroon pair i've advertised it someone responded to the advertisement but they haven't really followed up with me on the dm but hopefully i'll get be getting rid of that soon next thing i want to get rid of i think is this hot pot um hot pot machine electric hot pot machine just because um you need a lot of wattage for uh to have that thing boiling but my apartment only has one or two of those things like those high power high voltage plugs so it takes forever to heat up and I'd rather get a gas powered one and then uh, make hot pot out of a gas powered little st stove thing. So I think uh, a bigger family might have better use for it and it just takes up so much space. So uh, that's the next goal and yeah, we're, we're doing a lot. Uh, we are making my space better and cleaner. So I'm gonna give y'all a really, really big tip about getting the best deals possible and that is do not buy things on black friday don't even buy them during christmas the best time to buy things is after christmas uh, i swear to you just go to marshall's and you'll get everything completely off so the other day i went to marshall's and almost everything was 50 percent off i found these 200 dollars jbl speakers that were a hundred dollars but you know, your boy is on a budget, so I refrained myself from getting that, even though I really, really wanted it. It was it was just gonna be one of those other products that I have lying around that I never use anyways. And I already have a little Bluetooth speaker, so I didn't need it, but it was really nice and it was enticing. But one thing that I did get is this shoe dryer. I never knew that these things existed, but essentially you set these up and um, you put your shoes on them and it'll dry your shoes like a hair dryer will. Uh, so I'm excited to try it. I got it for 30 bucks and I looked at the Amazon retail price and it's like 50. So I think I got a really, really sweet deal. And uh, the description says it'll dry your shoes in one to two hours, which is amazing because uh, about a month ago, I got mud on my shoes just because like I do Uber deliveries. They send me to these weird parking lots. There's always mud. 
It's been raining in Georgia for God knows how long. Like, it always rains for like a week straight in Georgia for some reason. So, I have to clean my shoes pretty regularly, but the last time I did it, like, I couldn't wear those shoes for a week. I set them outside in the in, in my patio where there's direct sunlight, and it still took a week for them to completely uh, dry out. So I'm hoping this thing works. Now luckily, <laughs> the shoes, my daily driver shoes, uh, did get muddy the other day because it did rain and I was in a muddy area. So I got mud on those shoes. So we're gonna try cleaning those shoes up and uh, trying out this uh, force dry, dry guy, force dry shoe and glove dryer. Okay, so these are the shoes in question. You see there's a little bit of mud. It's kind of too muddy for my own liking. I know for a lot of people that this is their default, but oh, Look at me, I'm already messing up. Okay, but I completely dropped them. But these are the shoes in question. They got a little bit of mud near the sole and I really wanna clean these out just because this has a really nice, beautiful charcoal color. And although it's dark, because it's charcoal, it does it does allow the mud to be visible. So we're gonna go ahead and clean it off first. I, using this formula that I saw on the internet and when I did this the first time, it was really effective at getting mud off and making my shoes brand new and squeaky clean. So all you really do is you grab some baking soda and then once you uh, get that baking soda, uh, I get about a tablespoon, you add it to a pitcher and then you add some water to it. And what you try to do is try to get a pretty thick consistency. It should be thick enough to adhere to your shoe so i added a little bit of water and then i realized it was too watery so then i added more baking soda to this and this is the consistency that i'm looking for something that looks a little goopy but not too incredibly thick or else it's not going to paste onto the shoe that well so then i went to the bathtub and i got my little screwdriver attachment yeah you can actually buy these and these are super super cool because they fit right into any form of electric drill or screwdriver. I have a little cheap electric screwdriver that is not as strong as a drill, but it gets the work done when it comes to DIY stuff that you would probably do in your home. So once I attach that little brush head to the DIY um, little screwdriver that I have or whatever it is that you'll have, I grab the little baking soda solution that I got I rub it into the drill. I try not to turn on the drill in the air because the first time I did that, I did that and baking soda got everywhere and it was horrible to clean. Um, but I turn it on after it touches <laughs> the shoe. And then I just went around and uh, made sure to essentially cover the entire sole, get all the mud, and I make sure that there's plenty of baking soda that's uh, on there. I uh, make sure to get all the crevices and uh, be extra, extra thorough and get all the mud because that's, that's the thing that likes to stick to your shoe. Before I go on to the next step, I wait a couple of minutes and wait for that baking soda to dry about five minutes. And then I'm ready to, eat, to wash the shoes with this scrubber that I have. So this is what it looks like. The baking soda has hardened. This will allow it to really grip all those nasty mud fibers. And when I wash it to just slip off, it's really great for that because it's a little abrasive, but not too harmful to your shoe. So I grabbed this little scrubber that I have. I'm not using the drill scrubber because then if I use that, it's, it's gonna spray everywhere. So I just wash the shoe and then just make sure to get off any residual baking soda off. It usually doesn't need too much, but also make sure to get any part of the shoe that might have some ba baking soda sprinkles on it. Like for me, I had to wash the top of the shoes too, just because uh, the baking soda sprayed over there. So my shoes were completely wet by the time uh, I was done. And this is the final product. Oh my gosh, guys, these shoes look so new and so fresh and clean. I'm so excited for these to dry to, for me to start wearing them again. So now we're ready to unbox this dry guy, force dry thing. <laughs> um, but uh, it was a pretty simple unboxing. There's actually no instructions really. Uh, you just take it out of the box and unbox it. And I was surprised by the build quality. It's all plastic, but it's pretty hefty and heavy, but not too heavy. So it felt like it wasn't gonna break apart as soon as I touched it. Um, and it looks pretty simple. Uh, nice colors, I guess. So I got my shoes. 
and let's see uh let's see if this works so i think what people did it's like that oh yeah it's definitely like that <laughs> i was putting it in wrong all right um yeah let's put it in and see if this baby works i'm gonna turn it on and set it for the highest setting at 180 minutes oh i do hear something and jean luc immediately got scared oh this knob is kind of hard to turn if your hands are wet Ow. okay set it at the highest setting feeling the air it's not too hot it's kind of like the cool setting on a hair dryer on like low cool setting okay so i examined it a little bit it's more like the warm setting warm low setting that a hair dryer would have and surprisingly it doesn't make a lot of noise although jean-luc is very confused by it but he's not scared of it like he is a uh, well he just he, i don't think he likes it <laughs> but it's not as loud as a hair hair dryer so i'm really happy about that because the one one worry that i did have with these things is that they're going to be very loud um and y'all might hear the rest of the like a weird buzzing noise for the rest of the vlog but we're gonna let that do its thing and then come back three hours later so a little bit of a story time for y'all oh the sun is hitting my face okay so a little bit of a story time for y'all is that um, I got a bunch of skincare products from Korea. I'm not saying I'm not saying like buying Korean skincare products from here. These are like skincare products from Korea the nation uh, because uh, my friend John V. I know she watches my vlog, so you're getting a shout out. She recently got a bunch of products from someone who was going back to Korea. It was like a exchange student. Um, and she just had a bunch of Korean John Lu. <laughs> no, he knows I'm going to be using him eventually for this video. Oh. Anyways, so Jean we got a lot of uh, these Korean skincare products from Korea, uh, and uh, from this student who just brought a bunch of them over, and she gave me some. And um, this one I think I really like, and I really need y'all's help on this. But it's this like uh, skin cleanser, like facial cleanser for men um and i really like it a lot it's exfoliating it smells so good and it like leaves my pores like feeling clean because i usually get a lot of blackheads and i love this but every time i look for this like uh, from a u.s store it doesn't exist like i saw it on amazon japan but it's not in um amazon us so if y'all know somewhere i can get this in the us uh i will love you forever please leave it in the comments uh, but that's the only human thing i got from her uh she gave me these Korean cat skincare products and I thought this would be hilarious to show on a vlog. So the first one, it's this um, Pet Ocera body wash for cat. That's what it says. Uh, TM. <laughs> and it's, 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 a ba it's basically um, a shampoo, a cat shampoo. Oh, and the company is called Breezy Tail. I, I really love... <laughs> The packaging it looks so fancy i mean like i feel like i'm going to give my um cat a billion dollar uh, wash and then uh the description says breezy tail is committed to making a dermatological skin and coat care accessible to those who need it by partnering with veterinarians and other professionals from the development to the recommendation of com companimal <laughs> skin and coat care products i love that it says it's for your companion, like your companion animal. Um, so one thing I will say is that I got this body wash, but I also got this derma care for your companion. Um, and it's basically a moisturizer that's safe for your cat. Now I will say that uh, we're only gonna test one product on Jean-Luc and the other product, I'm gonna have him sniff it to see if he likes it. And I'm going to kind of react to it. And that is the body wash because uh, I don't know if y'all know this, but if you have a cat, cats are very water adverse. There's very few, 
few cats that can tolerate water and it can be a very traumatic experience for them and cats are generally cleanly animals and John Luke is an indoor cat only so he's literally always pampered and always clean so uh, I will not be washing him because I, I think that's inhumane <laughs> Uh, to do unless he gets very 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 dirty but I'm gonna have him sniff it I'm gonna sniff it and I'm going to uh, see what it's like the next thing is that uh, this moisturizer I will be using this moisturizer on uh, Jean-Luc I looked at the ingredients and none of them seem terrible <laughs> and um, he does have this area under his chin that gets very dry and flaky and I think uh, it, it might be very good for him and uh, if he likes it uh, and I will be monitoring him, um, of course, to make sure that he doesn't get any skin reactions or anything. I have the vet on butt dial. Uh, but it does say this is dermato uh, derm derm cat dermatologist and vet tested. It's eco-friendly. Uh, it's against animal cruelty. So they're very transparent. Like they have a whole, the whole list of ingredients on the back here. So um, I feel safe um, using this. Uh, for Jean-Luc and it says it's formulated exclusively for cats so we'll see uh, his reaction okay so let's uh, let's try out the body wash first dang there's a whole uh, seal there's a whole seal in it Ooh, <laughs> this looks so fancy y'all it has a little one of those like fancy like pump action bottles um okay I see I see all right, let's open this up. Oh, John Luke's already here. He's curious. All right, I'm gonna put some on my finger. Oh, okay, there you go. Okay, that's how I know it's not been. Ah, ooh, it's like a jelly-like consistency. It has a faint, like, unscented scent. It's nothing. It's kind of like one of those like prescription strength body lotions that some people can get. But let's see how Jean-Luc feels about it. He's already here, so. Jean-Luc, baby, can you smell this? Do you like it? It's okay? Well, he doesn't hate it, so I think that's a, that's a plus point. It smells actually really good. Like just a slight hint of that. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm over this. Uh, it's just like a slight hint of like that very unscented, clean, fresh scent. Okay, I had to get rid, get away from the sun for just a few inches because it was like super bright on my face, and I hope, hope I wasn't too overexposed for y'all. But let's open the next one. Oh my god, this is made out of in industrial grade seal. Ah, okay, there you go. Look, the seal is so strong that I broke off through the other side. That's how strong the seal is. These people are not joking when it comes to do not tamper with our product. So this looks very medically too. Like it looks like a cortisone, cortisone cream kind of situation. Um, there's some stuff in Korean that I can't read. I don't know if y'all can, but um, it just says specialized feline skin care hydrates and recharges dry skin and provides long lasting moisture. The Dermacare for Companimal. All right, let's open it up. Oh, there's a seal on top of here so it stays fresh until you use it. Okay, I removed that. Okay. And I'm just getting a little bit on my finger, if y'all can see. Ah, this has the same like fresh clean smell that the uh, body wash had. It's not, it's very, very subtle. So I don't think it's too strong for cats. Uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> let's use it on Jean-Luc's uh, under chin. So he's already here posing for the camera. Maybe you ready to try out this product? I'm gonna let you smell it. So I, I'm getting him used to the product. So he smelled it, he's not offended by it. And then I'm going to slowly introduce it to his chin. He probably doesn't like it too much because it's a little wet, but it is creamy. He's okay with it. 
I'm not even forcing anything on him. And he's had enough, but he's leaving. <laughs> but yeah, that was very easy to apply. And it felt very creamy, like it'll uh, help that itchy part of his under chin. So, uh, John Luke, baby, were you okay with it? Yeah? I was just manhandling you a little too much. Okay, so I've been observing John Luke for a couple of minutes and he's doing, he's acting like a normal cat. Something that I really liked about that little cream is that uh, after I rubbed it in, it didn't stay wet for too long. Like, it's been five minutes and like, it's completely dry down there and he's living his best life. But I do feel like it has moisturized his flaky under chin, dandruffy under chin. So I think I'll be using that product more often. Just whenever he gets those flakes, he doesn't get it often. But the shampoo we're gonna save for whenever he gets dirty, which is probably going to be never. So it's been about a little bit past an hour. And not gonna lie, y'all, it's starting to feel a little dry. Still a little wet down here, but definitely around here, it's, it's definitely dried up, like a lot still a little moist this part is this part is definitely moist but over here is drying up so uh, i'm gonna give it the whole time we're gonna check it out to see if it's completely dry all right since the shoes are drying and we just uh <laughs> subjected jean-luc to being moisturized uh i wanted to sit down and talk a little bit about um being out during the residency application process and you know whether or not that is a wise decision because this is going to be my first job as a licensed physician and also um it's the opportunity for me to continue my education in medicine to uh, be experienced in the um, area that i want to gain experience in and be licensed in so um I know a couple of years ago, I made, not even a couple, maybe a year ago, I made a video about why I decided to stay in the closet as a queer person, as a trans person, um, when I applied to medical school because I didn't want to cut any of my chances when it came to, when it came to um, getting offered the chance of becoming a physician. but that um that mood has changed uh, this year when i applied to residency and uh, i'll explain the reason why before when i was applying to medical school i stayed mostly in the closet because for me i didn't have a lot of chances i was a first generation student i didn't have any legacy like siblings or like parents or grandparents that had made contributions to universities with medical schools so and i was first gen i was poor i mean like there was a lot going against me when it came to applying to medical school i was willing to do anything to get into medical school and if that meant you know um being in the closet uh, for the application season i was willing to do that i knew i was going to be out afterwards because i wanted to transition medically but i knew that uh, I had a lot to lose if I were to be out. And at that time, uh, the uh, the current uh, culture <laughs> wasn't as open to having trans people in medical schools. Now, as trans people are being more politicized and that trans healthcare has been on the limelight of, you know, a health disparity that we, we need to start addressing because so many of our patients uh, come in with gender dysphoria. Not a lot, but like, there's a significant amount of patients that show up now um, that need gender affirming care and that want good gender affirming care. So uh, the, 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 the culture of medicine is changing to be more inclusive, but, but it's also changing to the point where the programs that are not so inclusive are being very vocal about not being inclusive. So uh, my goal, and because I've been doing so much advocacy work, I've literally made a name for myself as just, as just a medical student in the field of medicine entirely as an expert on trans health. Like I'm reviewing, I'm peer reviewing academic papers uh, for some of these journals on trans literary, literary medical sources and studies. So at this point, because I've made such a name for myself, uh, 
I have a lot of cushion when it comes to pushback. I have a lot of advocacy. So I didn't want to be in the closet this time around. I knew I was going to give my full, authentic, vulnerable self to these interviews because it's a way I'm going to be spending four to five years in these programs, depending on the specialty I get into. And um, residency is more on teamwork than it is on med school. Med school, yeah, you have your classmates, but everything you do, your performance and everything, it's entirely really based on you, your performance and your ability to be a good clinician and a good uh, a good um, learner. But in residency, a lot of your performance is based on who has your back. Med school, there is some there's some influence to that, but residency is even more important. So for me to get good training, I want good teammates, I want good higher ups that support me, understand me, and is willing to learn from their mistakes. And I'm willing to learn from my mistakes too, because I'm not, I'm not a perfect person. I have problematic views. I have ignorant views too that I need to be checked on. So I wanted to give my full authentic self. So I've decided to be completely open. Like as open as I can be, I even talked about how I delayed um, at my medical training by a year to get top surgery. I'm not gonna pretend to be a straight person when I apply to these programs just because of how much advocacy work I've done. There's a, there was actually one program that I was, thought was really funny an interviewer thought I was a straight man who was very interested in trans health because she couldn't imagine a trans person um, being this successful in this, in this field. And that's why it's important for me to be out. Because as soon as she assumed that, I was like, nope, I'm trans, I'm sorry, but like, I'm trans and I've done all these amazing things because I am trans, because I am passionate. I'm just not, I'm not just a cis straight person who's interested in this population. I am part of that population. I'm part of that community and I'm going to serve that community. That community is gonna be a part of who I give care to. So that's been very inspiring to me and the feedback I've gotten is really good. Uh, most of the programs I've applied to, I've been vulnerable to, they all appreciated my openness. They all appreciated what I'm going to bring in to their program by being open, how I'm going to improve their program by being open, how I'm going to challenge the program by being open about who I am as a trans person. I will say there that there are a couple of programs where uh, I was initially regarding them highly, but based on my experiences of how they've reacted to me being open has put them down on my rank list. And there is one program that I'm actually not even going to rank because of how poorly they handled um, asking me questions about being trans. Uh, I'll talk about that later after the match cycle, but it, it was very, 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 problematic like downright dis disrespectful and discriminatory not just towards trans people but to women too so uh, i'll get i'll get on that later because i am going to file a formal complaint uh with the acgme and the nrmp uh, about this program but at the same time most of this has been so good and it's been a it's allowed me to actually gauge where i will be going like I've said, in me when I was applying to medical school, I didn't have a lot of options. But in residency, because I have so many accolades, I got interviews at a lot of programs. And it's not a personal brag, um, but it is a testament to the amount of dedication and work I've done in the field of medicine beyond being just a student that's allowed me to get um, this much recognition and this much care for the work that I'm doing. So y'all, I'm so excited. My interview season is actually ending in, um, in a couple of days. I'm going to do my last interview and um, I've interviewed at a lot of programs and I'm very excited to see where I'll be heading in March. Of course, y'all will be one of the first and only people <laughs> to hear that news, but I'm excited and uh, I'm choosing to be my authentic self because uh, at this point I have nothing to lose. Uh, I have only to gain from being open. And I hope that um, if you are in a position where you have to be in the closet, I completely sympathize with you because I've been there. And I hope that as you, as you rise from the pupusa that you are to become a butterfly, <laughs> this is a very bad analogy, but as you, as you transform to your true self, that you gain the, the fortitude 
and the protection as a trans person or as a queer person or whatever minority that you are that you ha feel like you have to hide whether or not you have a chronic illness an invisible illness you it ends up being such a strength for you that nobody can stop you i hope you get to that one to that point one day because it's really helped me a lot yes i do face so much pushback i mean y'all see how much death threats and absolute disrespect i get from people but at the same time it's allowed me to find a community of people that care and a community of people that want to take care of trans people whether or not they are trans so yeah this has been a very very humbling season but it's also been a season where i felt powerful and um i wish everyone can feel that way one day if you are one of those people who like me felt like nobody really cared Alrighty, y'all it's been about three hours looking at this all right the timer ran out um i am about to um live test these shoes oh my god they feel they feel completely dry y'all all the way up to the laces they do but we won't know the real test until i put these on so we're about to do that right now all right here goes nothing mm -mm. One sh foot in. Oh. Okay. Okay. Feels warm. It's toasty. I guess this would be really great if you are like living in the winter season. Somewhere where it gets snowy and you like your feet warm before you start your day. But it feels dry, y'all. It definitely feels dry. I'm going to walk a little bit. Nothing feels moist. Everything feels dry. <laughs> Even the laces, which honestly, sometimes when I dry shoes in the patio, the laces will still stay moist um, when I do that. But these shoes are completely dry. Oh my God, I'm so impressed. This uh, pointlessly gendered product, the dry guy force dry is actually does what it promises to it's also very compact it, although it's made out of complete plastic it is pretty durable it's a pretty heavy plastic pretty rigid and my shoes are completely clean now we'll take a quick look at them um, but they are squeaky clean again and ready to go Anyways, y'all, that's it for this vlog. Uh, I know I didn't go out and do anything like super, super interesting like I did uh, Sukaman last time, but I think uh, trying out this shoe dryer and the Korean cat skincare that Mr. Jean-Luc helped us experience was good enough content for the vlog. Um, it is still pretty early in the day. It's only like 1.30 p.m., but I am going to go get ready and spend the night uh, with my G friend. So um, I'm ending the vlog a little bit early today, but I hope everyone's had a really great new year. I, I hope everyone has uh, plans for the new year. I'm definitely chilling this month of January. I'm taking a virtual elective and then February and March, I'll be taking uh, clinical electives. I'm going to be doing one about HIV psychiatry treatment and two on reproductive health. So I'm very, very excited. Those are my last two rotations in med school. Um, so I'll be finishing all my requirements for graduation in March. So I'll have at least three months off before residency starts. I'm so excited, y'all. We're at the final stretch. I can't believe I'm here. Four years ago, I was a bumbling fool getting and thinking I would be <laughs> a doctor. Um, and um, a couple of schools took a chance on me and gave me an acceptance. And here I am. And I'm more than just a doctor. I've become a community activist uh, for trans people and people of color and minority populations throughout the world. Um, anyways, uh, I hope you like this vlog. I hope you'll tune in for my future videos, my informational videos, and my vlogs. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. Happy New Year, y'all. This has been.